Hey guys, Ryan here from Rocket Outdoors. Thanks for tuning in again. Uh, as you can see, I'm in my kitchen today. A little different. Uh, what I'm going to do is just cook up a little bit of food for dinner. And then I'm going to do a dehydrator video. So I just wanted to kind of show you what I was going to do and uh, I'll take it from there. So I did a little cooking experiment earlier uh, where I cooked on the alcohol stove and made a chicken coconut curry in a coconut shell. So that may be something that I'm going to do later on. Uh, it came out pretty well, so I may try to do that. So what I have here is the ingredients that I used, which is just some, I cut up some boneless chicken, boneless skinless chicken breasts um, into small pieces and some zucchini, some canned tomatoes, um, an onion, uh, garlic, grated some ginger in there, and just a little bit of spices. I have here a bag of frozen uh, rice cauliflower that I'm gonna end up putting in there. And I have some Indian curry um, spice that just comes in a packet. You guys can see that, this stuff's pretty good. I use it every once in a while. I dehydrate meals and I usually dehydrate like a lot of raw ingredients. So then I can kind of just make up things on the fly. Um, I'll dehydrate all kinds of vegetables and like different kind of meats like chicken, hamburger, all that kind of stuff. And I can just kind of mix it together and mix a different sauce with it. So I have a ton of these like packets that are opened in a bag and I'll just put a little bit of some kind of mixture in with a special combination and just make a custom dehydrated meal for that day. So, <clears throat> um, but I'm gonna cook this up and dehydrate later on. I may throw another can of, these are diced tomatoes and green chilies. Um, you've probably seen this at the supermarket before. I'm probably gonna end up throwing those in there too. And um, I'm probably gonna put some rice in with it um, when I actually dehydrate it. That way it's kind of a rice mixture. Um, so stick around and I'll show you what I'm doing. As you can see, I just have a pan here um, with some coconut oil in it. So I'm gonna melt that up and then throw in my chicken and just uh, get that all sauteed up. All right, guys, I got my, uh, all my oil heated up in my pan. Now I'm just gonna pour in my food mixture. And... Yeah, sizzle, boy. <laughs> So I just have this on like medium high heat. Do that. Now I'm gonna throw my curry seasoning and mix that up. I have a little bit of seasoning in there already. Just give that a good stir. Mix it all up in good shape. I may add some additional seasoning to this. Um, we'll see. We'll let it cook down a little ways. And um, I'll throw in some more tomatoes in a few. Okay, guys. My stuff's cooking up here pretty good. It's going to be a lot of moisture for all the vegetables, too. But I... Uh, he thawed my rice cauliflower in the microwave. I'm gonna throw that in there. And I open a can of these tomatoes. I'm gonna throw those in there also. Give that a good mix. Okay guys, my food's all done, and I'm just going to throw a little bit on a plate here so you can see what it looks like. <clears throat> that. With the cauliflower, it's a little bit of a mushy mess, I guess, but I tried a little bit, it tastes damn good. 
you guys can see that. It's probably kind of steamy. You just got the tomatoes, zucchini, rice, cauliflower, chicken, and onions, and all that good stuff. All right, guys, I'm ready to set up my dehydrator. So I took the food, and what I did, I let it cool, and I just chopped it up so it was in smaller pieces. Um, you want to try to get the pieces as small as possible. That way it's easier for them to dehydrate. So I kind of did that. So now I'm going to do is take some scoops, lay it on these trays, which you can see there. You can see there. And, <clears throat> and, and I'm going to spread them out. So I'm just going to take a scoop here. Just kind of... Some little piles here that I can spread out. It's probably going to be pretty good, I think. Let's see. I'm just going to take a plastic fork and just kind of spread this stuff out a little bit. Try to get it as thin as possible. It takes a little bit of time. It's a little bit of work. So I'm going to let this go, it's getting late, so I'm going to have to let this go overnight. Um, you really can't over dehydrate something, um, you know, you'll just end up pulling 100% of the moisture out of it, which is what you want. You know, you want to get as much, if not all of the moisture out as you possibly can, and that will keep bacteria from growing. So I'm just going to keep spreading it around. What you do is I'll dehydrate this until I go to bed, and then what I'll do is I'll take every take all the trays out, and I'll kind of move stuff around a little bit and swap locations of trays, and um, just to get it to kind of dehydrate kind of evenly. That's not looking too bad. So there's the tray there. I'm gonna set this one down, and I'm just gonna keep doing it. Okay. I'm back. Um, I have all my food spread out. Uh, you can see it. I have three trays. So I'm just going to stack these up. I'm going to put a blank one on the top. Just to give it a little extra air space. I actually have a blank one on the bottom too. Uh, my dehydrator is a American Harvest Nesco. Um, dehydrate, pretty common. Um, they're not super expensive. They work very well. Um, there's some other ones that are more expensive that work a little bit better. They're a little more convenient. This one's kind of a pain to, to clean and stuff like that, but um, it works pretty well. So I am gonna put this on, plug it in, and then set it at the highest rate, which is 160 degrees. has a little fan in it and a heater and basically that's it you have your dial right here you can see that um, dial for the temperature it ranges everything from 35 or 95 degrees Fahrenheit um, which you would use to do like more like uh, fruits and vegetables and that kind of stuff um, and then when you're wherever you're doing meat you want to set it always at 160 um, that'll keep bacteria from growing so that's about it um, we'll let that sit for a few hours. I'm going to come back and stir everything around a little bit and uh, spread everything out and change um, the position of the trays and swap them around a little bit and put it back on and just let it go. So I'll come back to you in the morning and uh, we'll check it all out. Hey guys, well it's the next morning. Just having a little coffee. My dehydrated food is all done. So I unplug this and let it cool for a little while. And it's very dehydrated up. Give a look. Got my three trays here. See what that looks like. So now what I'm gonna do 
is and empty these onto a paper plate, which isn't always easy. I'm not spilling it all over the place. You'll see how much this compacts down. <clears throat> compacts down a lot. This will make about four servings at least. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put this in a freezer bag and put it in the freezer for now. And then when I'm ready to start portioning stuff, I'll use like some quart size um, freezer bags and I'll divvy it up and then I'll add some rice to it at that point um, to stretch it out a little bit more. <clears throat> Yeah, it'll, it'll be quite a bit of food. It'll be in good shape. So this will be, our canoe trip is gonna be about six days, five nights. Um, going to the Adirondacks, to the St. Regis Wilderness Area. Do some wild camping and stuff. Just me and Fit Chick. Should be a good time. Hopefully the weather's good. So that's what you got. So I'm going to get a freezer bag. right on here. I'm gonna put the date. You always want to write the date and what it is because it's hard to tell what it is after it's dehydrated. Um, and put the date on there so that way you know when you made it and you know that way, I mean, especially in the freezer, this will last forever. There's no moisture in it at all so it's not going to get freezer burned. Um, and when I repackage it, I'll put some um, oxygen, some moisture absorbers in there um, just to be safe pull out any other moisture that gets into there somehow. <clears throat> so all I'm going to do is uh, bend my plate here a little bit. Sometimes this isn't very easy. I'm just going to put it in this freezer bag. Try to squeeze out all the air that I can. I mean, if you have a vacuum sealer, you vacuum seal these way better. Then there's no air in there at all. Um, but it's fine. I'll throw it in the freezer. I've done this a million times. I've kept stuff in the fridge with hamburger in it for a long time. And it stayed good for months and months and months. So, um, so that's it. So I'll throw that in the freezer. And, well, I guess that's about it. I'm gonna clean up all this stuff and uh, move on with my day. Well, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this little video. Um, some of you guys may not be into dehydrating, but I know a lot of you are hikers and um, it's just something that we do. Uh, it saves you a lot of money. If you dehydrate your own meals, they're way better for you than the ones that you buy in the store. And they can get expensive. Like, if you buy like, um, you know, ones from REI and these gourmet ones, I mean, they can be, you know, $11 for two servings. I mean, this costs nothing. I mean, I, the chicken was like $4 and with the vegetables and stuff, this is like a, maybe a $6 meal. I mean, we had dinner out of it too. And this is enough for, you know, um, depending on how much rice you want to put in, you get six servings out of this. So it's definitely cost effective. So thanks for tuning in guys. Really appreciate it. Um, 
<clears throat> stay tuned for more videos. Like, share, subscribe. Um, hit that bell notification button. And uh, right outdoors. See you on the next one, guys.